These are the faces of the Haitian people, hungry, thirsty, and desperate. In tent cities like this one, they are trying their best to survive. This is a place where a truck provides a roof, a bus becomes a home, and amidst the filth, a beautiful dresser seems strangely out of place. This single pot of soup must be stretched to feed more than a dozen members of this family. This is running out, yes? And then what? Nothing. Frustration is reaching the boiling point. I remember you all remember the, the hurricane, hurricane Katrina, where it happened. This, this right here is worse. There are more masks, real and improvised, because of the stench of bodies still out on the streets. They've run out of body bags, and in this case, metal sheeting had to suffice. But one thing not in short supply, the injured. Yesterday, these tents were set up by Doctors Without Borders, and many people are now inside in desperate need of medical attention. And yet, every day they wonder, when will the doctors come? This woman's stepdaughter and her cousin are both badly hurt. The house just comes straight down on top of her. And you've been waiting to get her medical help? Since that happened, they're waiting for medical help. They are waiting and waiting. A block fall on top of her head as well. Oh, it broke her lower back. Broke her back or yeah. hurt her back? Oh, she cannot walk. She, she paralyzed from the bottom. This man gave up and decided to take his relative to a hospital more than an hour away. Some trying to get into hospitals can't. Others pray it's not too late. The university hospital is bursting at the seams. A few doors down, a kind of mash unit has been set up by BFAST, the Belgian first aid and support team, to take care of the overflow, as if that word could apply when the overflow is in the hundreds of thousands. Do you feel like you're able to help some of these people? Uh, we try to, uh, basically it's, uh, it's comfort. Pierre LaRousse broke his leg and has a head injury. He reached out for my hand. We'll help you. Can you ask him where his family is? His father died. He's 13 years old. What about his mother? Hey, mama. Dad. No, leave him mal. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Squeeze my hand. What a horror, he cried. Why, God, why is this happening to me? Now, those doctors asked us if we could please find a plastic cast for Pierre. And we went to several medical facilities here, and we were told they had none. And if they did, they would use them for the people they were treating. We were very relieved, though, to see that Pierre's grandmother showed up shortly after we left and went into the tent to comfort him.